Let's, Let's get, get wild. wild with your host. Hey, I'm Doug Kowarko. And I'm Leanne Campbell. We're business and spirit align. This week, Doug will be sharing another chapter from his book on chapter five, right, Doug? Yes, uh, chapter book, uh, chapter five of my book, Breaking the Chokehold. It's an awesome chapter. And Leanne, this uh, chapter five is all about harnessing your millionaire mindset. And in doing so, there's 13 key characteristics of a millionaire mindset, things that I've been studying as I've been on my own entrepreneurial journey, uh, becoming a digital entrepreneur in the fast paced online uh, economy. And during the process, I really wanted to make sure how do I really win in this fast paced business as a as a, I want to date myself, but a middle aged man, uh, not growing up in a millennial culture with computers and technology and platforms. And it really takes a different type of a mindset in today's date, uh, building a business. And it all comes down to psychology. Actually, winning a business in the digital economy is 80% psychology and 20% strategy. And I can attest to that because it's exactly what is helping me win in business. So let me just start off by sharing what it really does take to win a business. And I've shared this before, but most people think, you know, these successful digital entrepreneurs just got lucky. But what they don't see are all these painful experiences and rejection and struggle and having to learn all these different platforms and even empty bank accounts to make their online business a success. And digital entrepreneurs are, these guys are heroes in my book, right? They've actually got true grit to learn what it takes to add value and be an entrepreneur in the digital economy. You know, they show up every day and they work hard every day and they hustle every day and they learn from a proven mentor every day. And they do this even though sometimes they feel like quitting. So anyway, I salute all the digital entrepreneurs and especially the millionaire uh, entrepreneurs, those that have actually busted into the life and business they love and are really creating, you know, the income and the lifestyle and the freedom they desire. And in this journey of studying uh, successful millionaire digital entrepreneurs, I've come to realize that actually success that we have is determined by what is called the success blueprint that we have on ourselves. And this blueprint really is, is mindset and its characteristics and capabilities and thoughts. And it's, it really will determine our financial abundance and lifestyle. And it's ingrained, you know, in our subconscious mind and, and it, the blue, and it will determine your overall success. But the problem is, unfortunately, you know, your success blueprint, you've inherited it from your parents, your mom and your dad and your siblings, and also even the five closest friends you associate with. So you got to be careful that if you have a really poor, inadequate mindset, the success blueprint, you need to change it. And one way to start changing it, we actually got to take the advice from Confucius. And he says, always make friends with people smarter than you. And that means you always want to be the dumbest person in your learning group, in your network. So you can learn from others and you can accelerate your growth. Because if you're learning from the wrong crowd, you'll never get from where you are to where you want to be. You've got to change likely your social circle. So as a result of an inadequate blueprint and people that don't change who they're learning from, they never quite are able to achieve the success they want, even as they get older. And a lot of the times they live with regret. So in order to change your, your success blueprint, you got to start to get re-educated and reinvent yourself for success. And you actually have to start deciding to play at a higher level. And you actually can't play the game of business with one foot over the fence and one foot uh, uh, on, uh, uh, on the field. You gotta jump in and learn and give it your all with both feet. So, but beware, you know, success does take time and it just doesn't happen overnight. When you're changing your mindset and you're building new habits, things really do take some time. So anyhow, so what are the 13 characteristics that I've learned and role modeled from millionaire digital entrepreneurs as I've tried to implement and am implementing a lot of their, uh, a lot of their new tools. And this will help build your own new success blueprint. And so number one 
key characteristic of their success blueprint is that millionaire entrepreneurs, they raise their standards for success. You know, they, what are they called? Raise the bar. And it's their beliefs and their actions and the results. They expect more them from themselves than anybody would expect from them. And it's like, you've got to be an Olympic performer. You've got to wake up every day. You've got to perform every day. You've got to train every day. You've got to take uncomfortable action every day. You will not win by sitting, uh, sitting around doing nothing. Uh, quality of life and business success, it does not respond to want. It only responds to action. You know, knowledge is not power. Knowledge acted on is what power is. So anyhow, raise the bar. Number two uh, success habit for building your success blueprint is millionaire entrepreneurs, they have, they understand their why. Oh my God, understanding your why. We've heard about this in psychology for so many years, but it is what self-motivates you. Everybody has their own different reasons why, what motivates them, what gets them out of the bed. Are they looking after their family, their children? They want to see things around the world. Your reasons why to become the best in business, it has to be huge. And they say, if your why doesn't make you cry, it's not strong enough. And it's the only thing that will get you to get up in the morning, face the nose, take hardcore action is being able to motivate uh, yourself. And just think about this for a moment. When you know your why, you get excited. And when you're excited, that's what motivates you. And the importance of excitement, you know what? Nothing happens in this world until somebody gets excited. And just think about that for a minute. You know, for example, if one of your parents didn't get excited, not, you would not have been born. Now that's the power of excitement. So an understanding your why. So number three, millionaire digital entrepreneurs, they follow their passion. You know, they wake up in the morning with excitement and go to bed late with enthusiasm because they are working on a business that they are passionate about. They are working on projects that are going to leave a legacy that are going to really make an impact for themselves and their family, but they love doing it. And you know, you have found your passion when you're doing things you choose to do and not have to do. And when you are doing things, you don't even notice when time is passing by and you are doing things that like I said, keep you up late with enthusiasm and wake up early with excitement. So anyhow, Number four, millionaire entrepreneurs, they are not afraid to fail. I can't tell you enough. Success, you have to embrace failure. There's an old phrase, you got to fail fast and fail forward because in order to move towards where you want to go, you got to make new distinctions. You have to fail. You got to muck it up. And if you're not failing enough, you're not working hard enough. And you have to take action outside of your comfort zone each and every day. The fifth key characteristic to change that success mindset is millionaire entrepreneurs, they make decisions fast and they take action fast. And so one piece uh, uh, of great advice, and it uh, uh, resonates with me each and every day, it was basically, it said, uh, you know, there's an old saying, you were born with wings, so why do you choose to crawl through life? And so you got to be able to uh, make sure that you're deciding what it is that you want go get it, go take action, stop fearing and uh, move forward. Number six, millionaire entrepreneurs in their success habits, they're independent thinkers. They know what they want. They want to live on their terms and they go get it. They want freedom, flexibility and opportunity, and they make sure they're the boss of themselves and the boss of their lives. Number seven, millionaire entrepreneurs, they think big. You know, they know that thinking big is what gets them towards achieving their goals. And it's unfortunate that we've grown up to feel that dreams are nothing but daydreams are impossible and they're not going to, uh, you're born under a lucky star if you're going to, uh, you're never going to be able to live your dream. But millionaire entrepreneurs, they have big dreams. And they also are number eight, they're focused. They're focused on their outcomes, they're focused on their goals, and they're focused on their actions, and they never let emotions, negative emotions, get in their way. They're very focused on controlling emotions and uh, absolutely uh, critical to their success. Number nine, millionaire entrepreneurs, they build strong teams. They know that they're, uh, they, they need other talent in order to build a successful business, that they alone cannot do it themselves and they need to uh, be able to outsource and find other 
talent uh, to move things forward. Millionaire entrepreneurs, they also leverage resources. They know that other people out there have skills, have talents, have money, have resources, and they learn how to leverage other people's resources in order to move their dreams forward. And number 11, millionaire entrepreneurs, they love learning. They love personal development. They love learning about new business strategies. They love learning new technology, and they love learning how to be productive in their day. And number 12, millionaire entrepreneurs, they love teaching. They, when they learn something, they teach. And the more they teach, the more they implement, the more they learn. And they want to be able to give back to others and give back to society. And they don't want to, they want to make sure other people can live the life they want. And lastly, millionaire entrepreneurs, they persist. You know what? And it's um, uh, the, the persistence. There's a great example about the importance of persistence. And actually, in 1985, and I just want to be able to give an example Mel Fisher found a wreck, a 1622 wreck, and is a Spanish galleon treasure. And it was worth $500 million, but it took him 33 years to find it. He had, if he had quit before that life changing dive, he would not have found gold. So anyway, I just want to be able to say it's impossible to win the Tour de France the, the minute you learn to ride a bicycle. So continue, embrace your successes, celebrate your successes, but enjoy the process. It does take time. And your success blueprint, if you implement these 13 strategies or these 13 characteristics, you will change and you will create new results and you will start designing a life and business you love. Thank you, Leanne. And uh, back to you. Back to you, Bob. I'm just joking. <laughs> Doug, I was just like, that was from a movie, but it was so nice to hear all those things because my reflection comes from personal experience with 28 years of meditation. So as much as we have an active mind um, in order to utilize, um, to create this million dollar reality for ourselves, there is so much in unveiling the mind in order to come into a flow state so what you were talking about confucius you're talking about some of the greatest masters my journey with masters you know led me to astral travels meeting masters in different realms understanding that there's so much more to this eternal being that's within this body and how to experience a million dollar mentality from what perspective you know, is it the dollar value that you have in your hand or is it losing everything to really achieve the inner state of the Buddha? You know, I want to reflect spirit as to what the inner bliss can achieve and then carrying that and sharing that because we all find our purpose somehow, but we all are led through the soul and joy and um, inner callings also to understand the changes in the weaving of life and how life weaves us into um, showing us, oh, it was exactly what I was planning before, but now it shows up in a different way, but with even more empowerment to serve consciousness. Um, so my person, my personal um, gifts with spirit, you know, was meeting many masters along this journey and reflecting the million dollar feelings that people I know, like, you know, a, a feeling of a chakra awakening or Kundalini rising and going into a state of Samadhi that people spend their whole life to achieve, you know, like millionaires have the abundance, but that abundance of just cosmic energy within yourself and clarity and healing powers and, and unbelievable tapping into your inner genius, like I talked about last week, comes with that path. Now, the beautiful thing of being on this path is that, you know, if we question, why can't we have both? Why can't we have material and spiritual? You know, here we are combining business and spirit. Why can't we have both? And there was a lot of gurus and masterminds that I was on my path with until, you know, I was hungry enough to cry out to find unique enlightened masters that had the combination, that had the combination of not just renouncing, like I went through 10 years of renunciation of like, you know, no illicit sex, no gambling, no intoxication, no meat eating. Some of these really great fundaments gave me discipline but then you know and finding stories of the buddha saying well if you go and preach not to eat meat and then somehow or other one day you need to eat it to survive you know you're going against against everything that you also trained yourself to do so you have to have that thing we call balance 
the yin and the yang. And then you talk about failure, tapping into understanding the inner core of everything, the hell within you, accepting hell within you, accepting your dark side, accepting your shadow, accepting your lust, and really rising into that pure state that you're forcing, it comes naturally because you're accepting through the witnessing, through watching that breath, through understanding your chakras, through connecting with the inner genius of your, your consciousness, you're accepting how to live with joy as a complete human being. And from that acceptance is where abundance starts to come in and where you can actually show up and be in your purpose. And so that's where I want to, I want to tap into some of these um, 13 points that he was talking about just while I was sitting here listening to Doug, you know, part of the training with one of my final masters after many, many masters, not just meeting masters physically, but meeting masters on astral planes and being um, abundantly blessed with unbelievable miracles through desire of going on this pilgrimage with spirit that these masters also showed me, you know, a way to live, but how to live that abundantly with both material and spiritual because when you have more money you can actually have a better spiritual life when you don't have money you cannot sit and meditate because you're thinking about money so having abundance you have the ability to actually connect with your samadhi i was lucky at a young age to go through it naturally but 99 percent of the people are not they're they they meet me i've trained so many people in wellness i've i've been on this path but i had that gift naturally it woke up within me it's one of those rare, rare people, because I know out of all the people I've met on my journey, I've been a very rare person. Even in the Hindu temple, I was the only white girl in there, right? So I want to come back to understanding how the fundaments of having abundance, striving with these principles, accepting yourself as a human can actually help your spirit, can actually help your growth in your spirituality if it's not coming naturally. If you were my student, I would help you through that way. But then I've had gifts where I'm able to help people get that quicker. And that's why I want to show up and be able to give these gifts because breath is the first one that I saw was the easiest way for me to help, help people get to a state of no mind. Once you're in that no mind awareness or the mind slows down, then you hear your inner guidance. You have the ability to work on those 13 steps even better. And then you come into flow. That flow state is a happy state that you continue every day. And what happens when you're in flow? You're more open to the person in front of you that you can grow with. And Doug talks about crying at some point, you know, the tears and the hunger for that dream. Let's talk about dreams. So when I was trained in my meditations, I was having a lot of dreams. I thought I was supposed to be in deep REM in order to achieve my inner Buddha. No, achieving the inner witness by watching the breath, you're able to understand what are you learning from your higher self through dreams? So if you're a daydream believer, you're believing in your dreams in order to be a millionaire, are you studying your dreams is more important. What are you learning about yourself? What are you learning about your lust? Are you acting on your lust? Did you put it to action? What happened after you engaged in lust? Did it turn into love? Same thing goes for dreaming. If you're able to witness your breath, and make an intention before you go to bed and then pass through if you travel what are you learning about yourself dreaming are fears coming up are you able to learn from yourself even in a dream state then when you wake up you're abundant in creating desire for your dreams in order to execute your dreams so this was one of the key elements with my, my zen master was learning how to study your mind through becoming connected to the state of no mind, understanding that the mind is always active, even in the state of pure cosmic consciousness, which is enlightenment, there's still a certain amount of activity. Otherwise, this body would die. And that's what I learned from these great masters. But the beauty of being with masters that achieve no mind, you achieve peace. So no matter how much you're, you're gaining towards that mountain and rising towards all these elements with a millionaire focus, it's all about here and now if you're in your alignment with accepting yourself as a whole person, coming into wholeness. I'm very passionate about all these layers because I've done my work and I do surround myself with millionaires, but millionaires who also are connected to consciousness. Because let's remember, if your millionaire friends are not conscious, you're not going to have a good time. This is why business and spirit align. 
so that you can be abundantly joined life as the gift and your breath here and now with this age. Think about the next 10 years and go through those moments with a surrender and trust in the abundance and the beauty of this gift of life. And that's a millionaire state. So be in the state is first of all, understanding the state of flow and all those gifts that I've been giving you. I'm hoping that something I said today in alignment with those 13 steps can gift you with going home tonight, making an awareness to follow the breath before you fall asleep. And if you are able to tap into an astral plane where you are aware of leaving your body, learn about it. Because your natural inner guidance is going to create a way and a gateway for somebody to appear like me in a moment to help guide you. More importantly, now the next major thing here, the final key is, are you listening? Are we listening to source energy that is with us 24 hours a day? How hungry are you for your millionaire mentality? What with pure alignment with consciousness? I want to be a conscious millionaire. And I'd rather see a lot more conscious millionaires on this earth because then we change the frequency of love. We come into a state of love. And what does the earth mean more than anything? Love. That's my take on what our amazing friend, Doug Kowarko has on Breaking the Chokehold, bringing spirit in alignment with business. Anything else you want to say? You're on fire. Awesome uh, podcast today. We had such a, a great uh, perspectives and they integrated so well, Leanne. Thank you for your time. So good to be with you. God bless you. And let's get wild next. See you soon. See you soon.